Hey everybody, time to take you for a ride in old Betsy. And unfortunately, I was gonna give you two views, but it's not working out that way because somebody, this dude, left this GoPro on for some reason, even though I charged it up. I don't know how in the world it turned on, so that one I'm not gonna be able to get any footage of because I was gonna put it behind my shoulder here on the window to kind of get an out of the window dash perspective of it but we're going to take old Betsy for a little drive I don't know what the volume of the sound's going to sound like um, Betsy does have a dumped exhaust on her uh, so it's two exhaust pipes coming from the motor going into the cat and the catalytic converter's got two pipes in, one pipe out. And then it's coming out to just a small little, uh, it's not a glass pack, but it kind of looks like it. Muffler and just a little dump down. And she is a little bit louder than what it was with the cat that was completely stopped up. But as per my last video, talked about the issue with lack of power, all that stuff. So what I did was uh, did a compression check on the motor. The, the exhaust valves are not burnt, so I don't have any issue with that. Um, the other noises that you're hearing is the loose dash parts that are rattling around. But anyway, uh, so the exact exhaust valves are not burnt. Uh, the intake plenum does not have a leak. The uh, compression test was pretty balanced all the way across. It wasn't great, but then again, oh Betsy, she's got a lot of miles on her. So, um, but it was still okay. So. I'm really leaning now towards the fact that it's probably the bad gas. Now, if you remember, I'd said that I'd filled it up. So, so far I've only ran her down to three quarters of a tank. So what I wanna do is I wanna take Betsy and just run it completely empty and hit a fresh tank of gas in her. And I'm gonna put some more fuel injector cleaner in it because I figured it can't hurt and then see how she performs but when i fill it up with a uh, fresh tank of gas after this tank is burnt up then i'm going to uh, do a hard reset on the computer so that the uh, ecu can learn new uh, fuel trim values for the air fuel exhaust or the air fuel mixture and maybe that will help a little bit because i figured well got the exhaust sorted out I got a new uh, air filter, so she should be running better. The only common denominator in all of this is gas. The gas, I mean, three and a half year old gas. And considering that I went from a tank, or excuse me, half a tank of three and a half year old gas to putting another tank or another half a tank of fresh gas into it it's still not good gas yet so I'm really hoping fingers crossed that it's just the gas that's the issue and things will get better and then I'll if that sorts itself out then there'll be more stuff to do with the truck and then I can get into the dash and start working on some of the other problems. Otherwise, I mean, she's roadworthy. Um, the brake situation, uh, it, I've been driving it around for the last couple of days and it hasn't lost any brake fluid. So that's kind of an anomaly to me. Like, What the hell happened to all that brake fluid? but so far the brakes are solid um, from what I can tell 
she's getting gas mileage kind of like she used to because I've driven 91 miles on a quarter of a tank. So Betsy used to get about 16, 17 miles to the gallon if I was really just taking it easy with her. I figure in town I should be getting maybe about 14-ish, maybe 13. And that's not the case because I've only driven on the highway twice now, but it's only for a short period of time, probably about 20 minutes. When I take the highway, when I take the back roads, it should be burning up a lot more gas. Um, the code that it pulled up, I don't know if I said it last time, the uh, P1899, uh, yeah, I think I did, is a uh, park neutral safety switch for the transmission. And I'm pretty sure it's coming from the tilt uh, lock but I'll pull out all that wiring or get to all that wiring to make sure about the connections after I get the gasoline situation kind of sorted out with her. I'm really curious because right now I'm shooting with the GoPro Hero 8 Black, 1080p at 30, but I'm kind of curious to see how the audio sounds. Uh, it's not inside in any case. It's actually flipped upside down right now and using the two little bottom uh, folding mounting arms and I've got it hooked up to a uh, windshield suction cup so that part's working good I wish I had the second camera so I could get it giving you a different point of view but so far so good alternator still going good old pressure still like it's always been this uh this old Dodge never had really high old pressure, even when it was new. Uh, the gauge goes uh, zero, middle is 40, all the way up is 110. And when I'm in the throttle, it sits around 40, 38 after it's warmed up. Uh, it sits about 45-ish, maybe 50 whenever first started up and it's cold so the oil pressure's never been like really super high now my challenger that thing it's an oil pressure monster but uh different motor different generation if it wasn't for the dash rattling and the fact that the tires are a little bit flat spotted I mean, she doesn't make any noise. I mean, the dash makes noise because it's just vibrating around. What's this fuck nut going to do? Just pull right out in front of me, you dumb ski. Anyway. Um, so, we've gotten to the point of... We got Betsy started off a of three-and-a-half-year-old gas got her inspected, got her registered, got her on the road, um, got a new catalytic converter, new battery, uh, still got to stick in the uh, thermostat. Part of me is really kind of chewing on the fact of if I'm going to do the thermostat, go ahead and do the water pump because the water pump has never been replaced on this truck. And it'd probably be a good idea since I'm going to have to uh, take the alternator bracket off anyway to get to the uh, thermostat housing neck. I guess they're going to make that a gas station. So, uh, but I still have to do that. So if I'm going to do all that work, I might as well go the little bit of an extra mile and put a new water pump in it. Because with my luck, the water pump would go out a week after I replace the thermostat. The heat works. That's always a good sign. At least the heat works. I haven't thought about doing the heater core yet because I'm still in that debate stage. Of... I know you can't tell right now because you're facing inwards at me, but the uh, weather today is cold. It's in the 40s. It's very cloudy, overcast. 
it actually looks like it could snow but it's not going to but then again Texas you never know it may snow and I have an ice storm it's happened before you know the whole thing about working on this truck is I don't want to throw good money after bad and I know eventually I'll have to do something motor wise to either completely rebuild this one or stick a late generation Hemi into it kind of make it a sleeper um, and I don't mind I've rebuilt cars before in the past but the whole thing is I like to do it at a pace that I'm comfortable with comfortable with this was I was shocked to actually get her back to life and I don't mind doing a little bit at a time to get her up and running and uh, doing a little bit of this a little bit of that I just want to just want to make sure that the uh, power situation is gas related and you know my wife my wife is not a uh, car chick at all uh, she likes being in it she likes when I drive fast uh, when I had my Cobra she loved when I would go 22 pounds of boost on that baby uh, the Challenger she enjoys being in when I'm ripping through the gears but otherwise she doesn't know really anything about cars but the point I'm trying to make is that she's the one that initially said you know her mentality and women are great about this easy things first check out the simple stuff first so her mentality was is probably the gas You're probably gonna have to get all that old gas out of there and it's probably gonna run a whole lot better once you get all that old gas out and you know here I am thinking well burnt valves uh, dead cylinder or really really back compression back bad leak down test and or an intake leak because apparently the Dodge is from what I've read and never heard about it back in the day but then again back in the day nobody was surfing the internet for information but apparently there is a issue with the aluminum intake on the Dodges and the plenum is steel and they react to temperatures at a different rate and the gasket would go bad and you would get an intake leak so I've checked for that no intake leak I've got an aluminum plate in the bottom of mine so I don't know if it was only a 360 engine problem or some of the 318s had it because I can't really get good information regarding what was what uh, but so the intake is good the exhaust valves are good the compression not so great but then again not horrible either not to explain the power loss like I feel like I'm pulling a trailer so it has to be bad gas women are smart women are smart I thank God for smart women because it makes us uh, makes us guys look a lot better when you got a smart wife. And plus, it always helps when your wife is gorgeous too. So, two thumbs up for me on that. Got that covered. So, Betsy. So, I am not too far from home. So, I am going to call it a day regarding old Betsy driving around with her apologize I didn't have a two camera view uh, I don't know where what in the hell happened why that one GoPro turned on or I don't know if I was changing the settings forgot to turn it off but either way so until the next video hopefully I'll be able to burn off some more gas and I'll show a uh, video of me filling her up with a tank of full tank of fresh gasoline reset the computer let it learn its drive cycles and maybe then she'll be perfect for the next steps maybe so this i mean even with all the rattling it's still fun driving this truck
some memories of this place. A lot of memories. Hope you guys have a good one, and I will talk to you later.